It's been a twisted journey, but it's time to lay this monstrous monster mash marathon to rest. My cohort and I must take leave of you and go rap, rap, rapping on another distant chamber door. My mom used to take me under one of her many arms and say a spider is as a spider does. So go scare the crap out of as many people as you can, son. That means your irresistible arachnid needs to creep back to Hollywood before dawn. Too many weirdos around here anyway. But before I go, take a look at this video for my new album, Along Came a Spider. Until next time, catch me if you can. <laughs> the Monstrous Monster Mash Marathon. Spirit. Welcome to the world premiere of Alice Cooper's Along Came a Spider. I'm Herbert, and I will be your host tonight. <laughs> Along Came a Spider is Alice Cooper's reinvention of the music video. The monster of rock proves he is king of monsters. Perfection! This is about a serial killer in love. Mm. Looks like there's someone out there for everyone. I like the way you think. Now let's look at the making of Along Came a Spider. I don't, oh no, I would definitely not trust my kids with the, uh, the onstage Alice Cooper. <laughs> I wrote a series of short stories. Um, this was one of the short stories I wrote actually about, about 15 years ago. And there was about five of them. And I went back and I kind of picked up this envelope, opened it up, and I started reading it. And I went, this character, you can do a lot with this character. He's a complex character. He's not just a serial killer. He's got a, he's got a romantic side. Um, killed by love and the one that got away he actually falls in love with the eighth victim and he can't cut her leg off because he falls in love so that's a complication in there and then he has a, a religious epiphany at one point going what if i'm wrong so he's not just a serial killer that's bent on killing he's got all kinds of complications going on when you get those complications then you can write a lot of songs because there's a lot of color going on it's not necessarily a character but an actor I would compare Alice to, uh, I mean, you could say Freddy Krueger, you could say Jason in the Friday the 13th movies, but that, that's not really exactly it. Uh, I would compare Alice more to Lon Chaney Sr. in general. I think Alice is the Lon Chaney of rock and roll. <laughs> As humans, we can get behind fictitious serial killers. We love Hannibal Lecter, we love the Joker, we love Darth Vader, but it's very hard to get behind real serial killers. You don't hear guys sitting around going, eh, I'm a Jeffrey Dahmer man myself. Oh, really? Uh, John Wayne Gacy, my whole family kind of gets behind him. You can't get behind real serial killers, but for some reason, fictitious ones are really interesting. So I invented a fictitious serial killer that I think Alice would be able to play. I mean, what a genius idea, you know, he had. And if you know Alice, he's such a mild-mannered guy. So it, it shows his talent as a performer, the fact that he can be that on stage. And yet, if you just sit in a room and talk to him, I mean, he's the most regular guy you'll ever run into. Um, but uh, I don't know about regular, <laughs> but he's... Um, He's, he's a lot different than, than he is on, on stage. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, Alice started it. He really did. There wouldn't be a Kiss or a Marilyn Manson or any of those people without Alice. I mean, you could even say Slipknot. Sure. <laughs> you know? Stop running, stop hiding. 
Well, the, you know, we were doing video. We realized that we were the most visual band out there. And it was kind of like, why aren't we doing this on film to have some sort of a record of it? When we first started, um, it was a time when there was no MTV, there was no VH1, there was no... It wasn't even a concept video clips. So we were doing, uh, you know, film that later went to video. Uh, Welcome to My Nightmare was totally done on video in, in Toronto. And it was so new that the guy that invented it had no idea what to charge us. That was the first time that an album was really visually portrayed. Um, Vincent Price was the special guest star. I think Michael Jackson may have picked it up from somewhere. So we did 10 days of shooting with Vincent Price, and the price tag was, I think, $20,000. If you tried to do that video today, that would be a two, three, four million dollars. And um, it was an ABC TV special. When we first saw videos, when they were started saying, uh, well, uh, you know, uh, video killed the radio star was the first video I went. No, that was about five years after we did ours. So to see Alice now reinventing the video form with this uh, really remarkable three-song operatic video that tells the story of the album is a, is a great full circle. And hopefully the people who watch it will get a great understanding of where this video phenomenon started. We'll be back after these words of wisdom. It's my party and I'll die if I want to. At least most of us will. Two supernatural super blondes and two back-to-back -back hours of magical... Well, some of those were quite frightening. That's a horrible message. But let's get back to the soothing tones of Alice Cooper. The video was almost like snippets of this character, how he's in the ins institution. It's really cool. It's basically shot in a, uh, in a mental hospital, and uh, Alice and I are patients, and uh, Alice gets out, and I'm stuck in the mental ward. It doesn't really explain why he's in there or how he gets out or any of the things. If I ran a mental institution, uh, I wouldn't lock up Alice Cooper. I would actually, you know how in prison they have the uh, the trustees, trustees. I'd make Alice a trustee. I, I would have him be uh, the one inmate there that I would make sort of my assistant. You know, to help me better understand the other people that were in there. The odd thing about it was in the middle of of the video, and I say this very cavalierly. Uh, so there I am strangling the nurse, and the earthquake starts, and the band's playing, and we're rocking, and, and we're in an old hospital, an old abandoned hospital that ghost hunters should be in, you know, and we're I'm strangling this nurse on in touch with your feminine side, and all of a sudden I look up, and everybody's gone. And the crews, everybody's running to the doors, and I'm going, what is going on? Because the adrenaline was so high, we didn't feel the floor shaking. As soon as everything said cut, all of a sudden, we were getting knocked around in this building. Everybody left, and the band was just there, sitting there going, well, if we go down, we go down. You know, we didn't have time to get to the door. So, so in, in the video, you actually see the, the camera shaking, you know, from the, uh, from the, it's a special effect only God can do. Slash has always been, he's sort of been Alice Cooper's auxiliary guitar player for a long time. And I think the first concert I went to was probably in 1984, 85, or whenever it was. I became a huge Alice Cooper fan. We took him on tour with us. Uh, Guns N' Roses' uh, first tour supporting Appetite for Destruction, um, one of the legs on that tour we opened up for Alice Cooper. And at that point, you could see how great these, this band was. But Slash jumped out as a great guitar player. Not an Eddie Van Halen or a Steve Vai or a technician. He was a great rock and roll guitar player. And, uh, and when I tell my guitar players how to play a song or ask, I say, play it like Slash or Joe Perry. And when I say that, I mean a la middle of the fretboard rock and roll. No, nothing way up in here, nothing. I said, I want to hear something that's just grinding rock and roll. So when you're using somebody as a standard, <laughs> that means that they're one of the best. And Slash is always the kind of guy you go for. I 
I called him up and said, hey, I got this song, Vengeance is Mine, that is just built for you. And he says, that's the song I want to play on. I, I didn't even go to the studio. I said, just do it. I know what you're going to do is going to be great. And when I heard it the next day, I went, I couldn't ask for anything better. And uh, we laid it down really quickly, probably about an hour. <laughs> it was done, you know. Awesome. But it's a great song. <laughs> I think the idea is you let the audience create their own story. You bombard them with images. And if you explain all of it, it's no fun for them anymore. I like the idea of giving them a lot of odd images and then let, let them create the story. Dropping off or picking up? Picking up. Thanks, pumpkin. Nothing says normal like an endorsement from Billy Bob Thornton. But here are some things I can endorse. Now that's evil. You're watching the Time Channel, and uh, <laughs> looks like we've got a caller. Uh, hello, you're on the air. Uh, hi, uh, yeah, uh, this is Jimmy. Uh, what time is it? It's 11... Dot com. Now, the world premiere of Alice Cooper's Along Came a Spider. It's refreshing to hear a song about your everyday serial killer. Alice really knows how a guy like me feels. I really like you.
has the most interesting friends. Are they talking about me? Now here's some friends for you. Number on your screen now. I hope you enjoyed your evening with Alice. I'm Herbert. I'll be seeing you later.
Male enhancement.